right, so in this example, uh, all I have is a player that is a simple platform player and an area 2D that will allow me to detect uh, anything that enters it. Now, for this example, I'm going to print a body name, and this will allow me to see a body. However, the issue that we have here is you can see that the static body is being printed. That is because the area 2D is detecting the body of the floor. So the question is, how do I detect the player only? Well, there's many ways to do this, right? You can check for the name, uh, compare it to the player. That's something I do a lot in my tutorials, but it's not ideal. So we're going to use something called grouping. So in Godot uh, 4.3, they added a new form of grouping. So they added scene groups and global groups. Now, grouping, honestly, in my opinion, has gotten a little easier because now I can just create a new group here and I can call it player. I can just hit OK. And now the player is in the group of the player. So here you can see I can uncheck it or check it. And now in my area 2D here, I can just check to see if body is in group and check for a specific group. In this case, I'll check for the player. If it is, I will print this is a player. I'll add an else statement here just to show you that this does work with a print. This is not a player. If we hit play, it should print. This is not a player because they touch the floor. But when I enter that area, it'll say this is a player because the area or the player uh, guy is in this group called player. So you can now see that this is a cool way to add it into our game. It allows us to detect whether or not something is in a specific group. So one of the other biggest advantages to this is having AIs. So if you have another character body, I'm not going to show you the full um, you know, AI tutorial in this video, obviously, but let's say this is a monster here. We can go to the groups, add a new group called monster, and here you go. We now have a monster group, and it's that easy. So you don't have to care about the name of this monster. This could be a snail. It could be a bat. It doesn't matter because it's in the monster group. And so now we can always see if it's in the monster group. Okay, so hopefully this uh, tutorial helped. If it did, definitely hit that sub button down below. So I'll see you uh, again, hopefully soon. And I, def I also have a sub email subscription. You should definitely check that out. Um, I send out weekly tips and tricks and things in Godot that you might not know about. I also have a weekly challenge that I'll send out every Sunday with the solution to the previous week. So hopefully I'll see you guys around. Bye bye for now.